What's up guys, Xeramus555 here, and I actually have a cameraman this time. Brennan's holding the camera for me, so this is great. There's not something on the camera, is there? Something on there. There we go. There we go. Okay. Just wanted to touch you guys a little bit there. Have a little intimate moment. Uh, anyways, I'm coming to you guys with my, I know you guys are probably sick of seeing this, but it's my Zector deck profile. Um, I have changed this since the, I think it was 2.6. I'm not running Zector Agents anymore. A deck is really fun, it's just not always consistent but it has some very very cool plays and i mean if you want to play something fun i still recommend it it's totally bruce lee and zectors bruce lee and zectors oh yeah. yeah bruce lee is my homeboy what's up all right anyways um yeah so i'm gonna get to the deck profile uh, i've changed up my build i'm not running tomato or anything anymore it's just too slow um but yeah this this new build's considerably better i noticed and uh i'll talk about the changes i've made so starting things off here we have a uh, I don't know where you want to film it. Uh, right, right there. Right there. Right there. Okay. So we got the one Dark Room Dragon, obviously. Yeah, that ulti. So hot. Thank you, Scott. Um, you have your three centipede. Which you'll nice. always run three. Is it okay? It's in the center. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Um, one, two, three ladybug. Not going to say anything about that. That's basically your main engines. The three centipede, the three ladybug. Um, I've seen some people kind of ladybug down to like two and stuff. I still say that's just awful. You need to run in, uh, three of it. Uh, the one dragonfly. I actually think in the ban list, some people might disagree with me on this, but I think this is the one card in Dectors that could potentially go back to two. Um, Konami does like this deck. I mean, they, they obviously, you know, made it because they like the idea of it. And, I mean, I think that Hornet's obviously the broken card in the deck. It's not dragonfly. It says that Dragonfly Hornet's obviously very powerful, mm -hmm. but I mean, Dragonfly plus Ladybug isn't that broken. If you think about it, you just go one for one, you use two cards, a Dragonfly and a Ladybug in your hand, and you make an XYZ and you have like another Insector card in your hand. So, I mean, it gives you plays, but a lot of people be like, oh yeah, well Call of Haunted is at three, just bring it back Call of Haunted. But I mean, Call of Haunted is not really that great now that Sang got banned, and I'll talk about that when I get to it. Uh, the one Gigamantis, you don't need two, just one's fine. Um, I am running Hopper again. I do hate this card with a passion, but it is another card with Dragonfly. I've actually won games with this guy. Um, the direct attack thing is pretty funny, and the fact that uh, if you equip Sword to him, he is 25, so that's pretty He's good. just bad when you draw into him, right? Yeah, you kind of want him in the deck. I mean, if you draw him, he's not terrible. Um, it's just if you open him and, and Centipede, you're like, oh, this sucks. Because you, you, The ruling with him is you can't use him turn one, and the other annoying thing about him as well is that if you go Dragonfly, um, equip ho Hopper, Special the Centipede, you can't equip the Hopper. You, you can't equip the Hopper. You can't send it again because it's ruled that the Dragonfly will be the only monster that can direct attack that turn. You can't put it on the Centipede as well. Um, so it's a stupid ruling. It makes sense, but I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just hate drawing the card. Now, the reason I'm writing him again is. Um, I am running the Monk engine now. This engine is really, really good. Uh, I didn't like the idea of it at first because everyone's running Effect Veiler and like Max C and stuff right now. And it's it's bad versus both those. But I mean, you do side deck D Fisher, so like this is good game two and three as well. It's actually really good because you can just like pitch a dead D Fisher if it's in your hand. But essentially, the combo is you go Monk, you pitch a spell, you do run a lot of spells, and they're like dead MSTs, dead Insect Imitation. Uh, you could have a dead Duality in your hand. And you, you use the monk, pitch the spell, you special the Armageddon Knight, he dumps the Hornet. And then you overlay for Levalva Chain, you dechatch, and you can put either Dragonfly or Dark Arm on the top of your deck. Now, obviously, most of the time you're going to be going for Dragonfly, but say you already drew the Dragonfly. Um, nice thing about this is that you put Dark Arm on the top, that's one, two, plus the Hornet, three Darks in the graveyard for Dark Arm next turn. You top deck it and your Dark Arm's live. So it's just a lot better. Um, tomato is just too slow right now. I do like Tomato, but. I mean, essentially the only thing he ever grabbed you anyways was the Monk, so this essentially gets to it the exact same way. He was more for the Sangin, though, too. Uh, no, you ran Tour Guide when Sangin was around, but Tour Guide... I see people still running Tour Guide in this deck, and it's terrible, because if you draw two Tour Guides, it's just not good. The only deck that was okay in was Windups. Uh, I am still running two Card Cardies. Um, way so too good. good. Way too good. So good. It's way too good. And remember, everybody, it's a Mosaic Rare now. Yeah. Oh, one thing I want to say about the Monk combo is originally I was running two Monks, two Armageddon Knights, but I just found, like, if you open up the one Knight, and you didn't see these, the whole rest of the engine's dead. Now, the reason being is you're usually just going to, like, you open Monk, you're just going to summon it, dump the Hornet. And that means if you drunk, draw Monk later, or Knight later, it's dead. If you draw Monk later, it's okay, because you can grab the Hopper, and, you know, you go one for one off the, the mm -hmm. pitch. 
but it's just not that good. So really, like you want to open with this, not this. The one, the one knight's there just for like that random yeah. dump. So. Plus, you can go like second turn dad, and your opponent's just like, I have to walk right into this, don't yeah, I? Yeah, it's, it's nasty. Like if you open the dragonfly and you have the dad in the top of your deck, it's just like. GG. It's really hard for them to come out of it. Um, I originally was running a Dark Hole and, like I said, the second Monk, so I was running 17 monsters. What I ended up doing was kind the Monk out of the Dark Hole because I don't like Dark Hole. You mean the um, second Armageddon Knight? Sorry, sorry, second, I always say that. Second Armageddon Knight. And uh, I'm running two Max Cs now. I really like these um, just because, like, even though I'm not running Gores or anything, um, you know, there is still a lot of special summon in this deck or this game. And, I mean, it is a level 2, uh, so you can tribute it with Insect Imitation, which is nice because it's an insect, insect 2. It doesn't matter, but... Um, but, yeah, you can tribute it with Insect Imitation, and, I mean, you do run Threatening Roar, so a lot of times you'll, like, set the one Roar, and your opponent will try and go off and mm -hmm. kill you, and you just, like, draw cards off Maxi, and then you have the Threatening Roar to save you, so... Well, I mean, you got... You got... You, got, uh, you only got a, a limited amount of, like... Uh, you have one goal, get to your get to your Hornet, Centipede, and... Yeah. And, uh, and your... Dragonfly, so I mean, it just sends the deck out when you're facing one of those yeah, stupid I mean, spammy decks. Win. Yeah, it's it's nice. Um, you can win a lot of games just by being down with centipede and stuff, but I mean, it's not really completely necessary. So, mm. anyways, onto the spells. It's 18 monsters. I'm still testing the maxis. I may take them out and um, put something else back in, but I am liking them in testing. So, except when you get you get uh, OTK'd by mermails. Well, that's that stupid diva megalo crap. And, I mean, I wasn't... Yeah, if you don't draw a Threatening Roar, it can be pretty pretty nasty. Um, yeah, the two, I've seen some people running three swords. I think three's okay if you're running the monk build, but I just... The way I look at it is, I mean, these are just there for the OTKs. It's good to equip the centipede. And uh, I just don't think you need three. I feel like three would clog. I've seen some people also running one. That's terrible. You need to at least run two. Like, this card is busted. The fact that it's mandatory yeah. is really gross. You can't get around it. It's like, no. oh, I'm just going to grab back yeah, my dragonfly. You can banish the centipede it's equipped to, and I could still add back the hornet or something in my graveyard. You don't care. You add back that dragonfly, and then I'm like, oh, how am I supposed to get over this yeah. for next turn? Yeah, exactly. Uh, two imitations. I was running one originally, as you guys know, but I decided two is just great. Because if you open this in Ladybug, it's still an amazing play. Uh, it gets your combos off, but I mean, if you don't draw this in Ladybug and you say draw this in Monk, you still have your play. So, I mean, it essentially works really well. I uh, still run two duality. A lot of people are cutting duality in decks, a lot of decks, but I just find, like, if you open Centipede, you need to get to that Ladybug. If you open Ladybug, you need to get to the Centipede. And um, it just adds consistency. Uh, this going into Card Card D or this going into Threatening Roar where you have Card Card D is also really, really good. So. It just thins your deck out even more and you don't even yeah. have to worry about what's this, going on. This deck thins so fast. Um, I was originally running two MSTs, as you guys know, and the Insector Agents. I was testing it out, and I was running two of my last build of Insectors, right before this one. But I just realized, like, you need to run three MST in this deck. Um, so I ended up actually cutting a Call of the Haunted, and this is testing significantly better. You just, like, even in a format where, you know, not a lot of people are running back rows, excuse me, it's, um, you can still, like, hit your own stuff, and, you know, you can, like, hit Gigamantis and win the game from there. And it's just, like, way too devastating and just lets you get your plays off. Same with Heavy Storm. Um, I am running a Lure. I only have 13 Darks, and I really don't like banishing my stuff, but it's still really good. It lets you get to your stuff faster, and, I mean, I'm going to keep testing it, but I may drop this out for Book of Moon. Uh, one Foolish Burial, Staple, and Reborn. Like I said, I'm not running Dark Hole. I always found it just sat in my hand. It's not that great right now. And, I mean, it's good versus Rogue decks and, like, stuff, but I want stuff on the field to pop. I don't want to pop your stuff with my, with my Dark Hole, so... Uh, so that's the spells, 13 spells, onto the traps. What's the video at? It's like 9 minutes. Okay, perfect. Uh, 3 Threatening Roar, way too good. you got to run 3. Like, I hate that card with uh, passion. I everybody hates it. It's like my favorite trap in the deck. Um, before when Insectors weren't running this, I just I can't believe that they... Uh, just They won? Well, I mean, like obviously they won because the Dragonfly Hornet was at yeah. 3, but I mean, like... Oh my gosh, like when Billy Brake brought the deck back and he topped, and then, like, I just, I can't believe he didn't think of running Threat anymore, because it's just so disgusting. Um, two calls, like I said, I was running three, but the problem is now, since you're not running Card Trooper, and you're not running Sang, or obviously Sangin's ban, the reason this was good before at three was because, like, yeah, you get bad Dragonfly and stuff, but this gets popped a lot, mm -hmm. um... Well, it's, it's the chainable. It's a, you want it to be chainable, like what, like threatening roar is chainable. Oh, saying in search, yeah. but now it's not. It's chainable. Oh, nothing happens. Yeah, and I mean trooper's bad. Uh, I've tried to put trooper in so many times, 
And a lot of times you go trooper and you mill like all your good cards, and it's just mm-hmm. so terrible. I'd rather just run Armageddon because he knows I'm gonna dump the the monk. Because so. because before I mean before you went you technically went plus right because yeah. you're yeah now you can't you can't so yeah it's... I mean before you could have weird plays where you could like open this and uh, or, or you could go like this in a tour guide and you go tour guide Sangin detach the Sangin. And you'd set this, like make a Leviathan Dragon, and then they'd MST this, you get your Sang in search, and you're like, okay, I went plus. But now, like, you open Call, and you're like, okay, if opening hand, it's terrible, because the only thing you ever want to bring back with it is, like, Centipede or um, Dragonfly. Other than that, it's, like, garbage. So, mm-hmm. I don't know, I just think the two's, two's just a perfect number. One's not enough. Three, honestly, after so much testing with it, it's just too many. Um, two Compulsory. I don't run bottomless or anything. This card's just too good. You bounce back your own stuff. Great versus XYZs. And then I run... Drago Sack Killer. Yeah, this deck's actually got a pretty decent dragon match already, but, I mean, that just makes it a bit easier. Um, and then, yes, Warning Judgment. This is here, obviously. I, I don't like paying all the life points, but it's here to let your plays go through. Mm-hmm. And if you're good at this game, you know to play your Judgment at the right time. You'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's nine traps. So that's 40-card deck. Mm-hmm. Um, one, uh, Guy Charger. Awesome. Or Guy Dragon. One Tyrus. One Volcasaurus. Love that This guy's guy still way too good. Um, I'm not running Adrius or anything. I mean, I do like Adrius. It's like my favorite XYZ, but um, I just don't feel it's that necessary because you can always you can already pop everything anyways. Uh, this guy's fantastic against the Mermail matchup, and I think Mermail's going to be making a comeback. Uh, he's actually pretty decent versus, like, Draco Sack and stuff, too. So, obviously, they're just going to big eye him, which is kind of scary. Uh, Exostag. Love. This card so good. Um, Shockmaster. I'm running more fours in this build, obviously, because I'm doing the monk build. So mm-hmm. Shockmaster. Uh, there is a Shockmaster combo with this deck, which is pretty sick. Is it like, um, is it both both monks and then Armageddon Knight? No, you know, it's. I'll show you. I can show you. Okay. Afterwards, yeah. You uh, don't. Uh, people are gonna be like, hey, can you show us the monk combo or the, not the monk combo, the mm-hmm. um, dragonfly into or the the Shockmaster combo. Um, just look it up on the search thing already, guys. There's like tons of videos for it. I'm not gonna make a video for it. Evolve the chain, obviously, is your MVP. The my stroke's really good, and I do run Dweller um, just because he's actually decent versus dragons. And... He shuts me down like a big champ. Yeah, and we, I mean, water still can be a hard matchup for this deck because I mean it can swarm just as fast as we can. Mm-hmm. So I like the Dweller just for that. I mean, I don't have any waters in here, but you can protect him with threatening roar and stuff, so that's pretty good. Um sometimes I wish I was running two Leviathans over, like, this guy. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I, I've been I've never it. seen you brought out that guy ever. No, I rarely ever do bring him out, but I, the odd once in a blue moon I do bring him out, he wins me games. So, I mean, the thing is, too, this is one of, one of the few decks you can play him in where he's not bad because you can just pop him. Um, yeah, Leviathan. Like I said, I wouldn't mind running two Leviathans, but I think it's fine. Uh, Levy, our MVP of the extra deck. I do still run Temp Tempo. I was tempted to take this out. <laughs> Get it? Tempted? Temp Tempo. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> tempted to take this out because of... Um, bad Yu-Gi-Oh uh, jokes, everyone. Bad Yu-Gi-Oh jokes. I love puns. Um, for Giga Brilliant, because it's an ultimate rare. But <laughs> Well, you can also do... There's another OTK with Giga Brilliant you can do. But I like this guy. He's just too good. Um, he's also an out to... What's that mofo called? Uh, Abyss Gaios, which oh, I hate that card. Oh, nice. Um, Zen Mains, and the one gotcha. I rarely ever make this, but sometimes you get the two ladybugs in the field and you just need to stall. So, um, yeah, anyways, so that is the deck, guys. It hasn't changed a whole lot, but, yeah, the main thing is I'm not running Dark Hole anymore because it's bad. I put MST back to three, Call Hunt down to two, and so far it's testing really well. I really like it. The Monk build's fantastic, actually. Like, it just sets up your plays. You have Dragonfly Hornet turn two. And uh, it's just a lot faster. So what what number is this? Is it like 4.0, 5.6, um, 11.12? No, this was 2.6. So I'm probably just gonna make this like randomly 2.8. Just because even numbers are better. Oh well, no, I'll make it 2.7 because I might change the deck up. Right Rocky now. six yeah, we'll, thousand. Yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and um, yeah, peace out.